Rend your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Hello, good morning and welcome. You join me for this, the Church of England's National Worship, on the 11th Sunday after Trinity, the 23rd of August. A very warm welcome, wherever you may be watching, from across the Church of England, across the world, indeed, across the very galaxies, if there are any extraterrestrials out there. You join me, the Reverend Fergus Butler Galley, in sunny, or not so sunny as it may be, Liverpool, as we come together to worship according to the Book of Common Prayer. I'll be joined by people from London, Lincoln, Leicester, and here in Liverpool itself, across the country, as we come together united by our love for the beauty and the wonder displayed in this, the Church of England's ancient liturgy, as we come together to worship the risen Christ. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, Yet ought we most chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and a humble voice, unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and the desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders, Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which, which art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost 
as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said it is a people that do err in their hearts for they have not known my ways unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest glory be to the father and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And now we hear a choral setting of Psalms 112 and 113.
praise the Lord, ye servants. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth forevermore. The Lord's name is praised from the rising up of the sun unto the going down of the same. The Lord is high above all heathen and his glory above the heavens who is like unto the lord our god that hath his dwelling so high and yet humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and on earth he taketh up the simple out of the dust and lifteth the poor out of the mire that he may set him with the princes even with the princes of his people he maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson is taken from the book of Ecclesiasticus. He that liveth forever created all things in general. The Lord only is righteous, and there is none other but he who governeth the world with the palm of his hand, and all things obey his will. For he is the King of all, by his power dividing holy things among them from profane. To whom hath he given power to declare his works? And who shall find out his noble act? Who shall number the strength of his majesty? And who shall also tell out his mercies? As for the wondrous works of the Lord, there may nothing be taken from them, neither may anything be put unto them, neither can the ground of them be found out. When a man hath done, then he beginneth, and when he leaveth off, then he shall be doubtful. What is man, and whereto serveth he? What is his good, and what is his evil? The number of a man's days at the most are an hundred years, as a drop of water unto the sea, and a gravel stone in comparison of the sand. So are a thousand years to the days of eternity. Therefore is God patient with them, and poureth forth his mercy upon them. He saw and perceived their end to be evil. Therefore he multiplied his compassion. The mercy of man is toward his neighbour, but the mercy of the Lord is upon all flesh. He reproveth and nurtureth and teacheth and bringeth again as a shepherd his flock. He hath mercy on them that receive discipline, and that diligently seek after his judgments. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To the cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. 
The Holy Church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee, the Father of an infinite majesty, thine honourable, true and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God, in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up for ever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. The second lesson is taken from the Gospel according to St Luke. Now Elizabeth's full time came that she should be delivered, and she brought forth a son. And her neighbours and her cousins heard how the Lord had showed great mercy upon her, and they rejoiced with her. And it came to pass that on the eighth day they came to circumcise the child, and they called him Zacharias, after the name of his father. And his mother answered and said, Not so, but he shall be called John. And they said unto her, There is none of thy kindred that is called by this name. And they made signs to his father, how he would have him called. And he asked for a writing table and wrote, saying, His name is John. And they marvelled all. And his mouth was opened immediately, and his tongue loosed, and he spake and praised God. And fear came on all that dwelt round about them, and all these sayings were noised abroad throughout all the hill country of Judea. And all they that heard them laid them up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. And his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people and hath raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he sware to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the deserts till the day of his showing unto Israel.
a special words and notes for the public at large. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and set us at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church. The communion, the communion of, saints, of, saints, of, of saints, the forgiveness, the forgiveness of, sins, of sins, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have, have mercy, mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which, which art in heaven, hallowed be, be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come. Thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts with us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O God, who declarest thy almighty power most chiefly in showing mercy and pity, mercifully grant unto us such a measure of thy grace, that we, running the way of thy commandments, may obtain thy gracious promises and be made partakers of thy heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 O Lord, our heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 I shall take as the text for our sermon today a line from our second lesson, which was from the Gospel according to St Luke. To give light to them that sit in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let me let you into a little secret. I'm not a very good driver. In fact, 10 years since that golden moment for most teenagers when they are allowed to start to drive and their liberty appears on the horizon, I still can't. And indeed, I'm languishing still on my provisional driving license. A consequence of not being able to drive, at least currently, is that I walk everywhere. I walk to the shops, I walk to the park, I walk to visit people in hospital or in their gardens. I walk to church, I walk even, and tell it not in Gath, sometimes to the pub. And a consequence of work, walking everywhere is that you think an awful lot about your feet. There's a temptation, in fact, to think too much about your feet, to look down at them whilst you're walking. It's not a very good idea for two reasons. 
Firstly, here in lovely, wonderful Liverpool, as you walk along, people smile at you, they say hello, they look at you, and they expect something back. If you're looking down at your shoes, you can't return that smile, that moment of interaction. Secondly, if you're looking down at your shoes, you might think you know where you're going, but in fact, you don't. Because the whole point about discerning where we are, which way it is we're walking, what way our journey will take, is that we need to take in that which is around us, that which is beyond us, that which is outside the confines of our eye line, from our eyes to our shoes. In short, when we walk somewhere, we need guidance from outside. Guiding our feet into the way of peace. Like so many of the prayer book's phrases, it has the beauty of recognizability that echoes across the centuries, across the years, into the past, the present and the future. In fact, we say it every day at Matins. I think it's a marvelous way to start the day, to ask God to guide our feet wherever they may go in that 24 hours, into the paths, into the ways of peace. But today we heard that verse in context. In the song of Zecharias, as he celebrates the birth of John the Baptist and with pride and with prophecy, he suggests that he will be the messenger, the one who shouts forth for the one who will guide our feet into the way of peace. John the Baptist himself was a great walker, a great user of his feet, a wanderer even, as he traversed the wildernesses of Jordan, proclaiming repentance, proclaiming redemption, and proclaiming the coming of love. But despite Zacharias's prophecy, people didn't listen. They said he was a criminal. They said he had a demon. They said that he was a bad thing, a bringer not of good news, but of bad to the extent that in the end, he is murdered, killed by King Herod. People didn't open their eyes. People didn't open their ears. People didn't guide their feet into the way of peace. Because that's the thing about feet, those feet, their feet, our feet, is that they don't always instinctively move themselves, direct themselves, guide themselves into the ways of peace. They don't do that into the ways of love or righteousness or kindness or glory either. The Book of Common Prayer gets that, it understands it. You may remember earlier we prayed for forgiveness that we had erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. Powerful, beautiful, correct imagery. I don't know about you, but I can't count the number of times in my life when I have felt that I have erred and strayed that I can't guide my feet into the ways that I want them to go. That's human nature. It's fallen. It's failing. It's fragile. It's sinful. We are, after all, humans like as a drop of water unto the sea, as our first reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus put it, we are not gods. And so the temptation can be to think that we don't matter, that there is no consequence to the ways we walk, certainly no consequence for God, who is surely high and mighty and above all these things. The temptation is to say to ourselves, where we walk does not matter, for we walk alone and therefore we can walk wherever we want. The glory of the Christian faith, and by extension, the beauty of that rhythm found in the Book of Common Prayer, is that whilst we might wander along streets and roads we ought not to, whilst we might travel the highways and byways of anger or sadness or selfishness or fear, we do not, to quote a song very often heard in this city, walk alone. When we pray those beautiful and powerful words of the prayer book, we are, of course, walking alongside all those who prayed and knew and loved them in the many centuries since it was written, and all those who will pray and know and love them in all of the centuries hence. When you prayed them today, when you joined in our worship, you were praying and walking alongside people 
from London and Lincoln and Leicester and Liverpool and all across the world. And of course, when we struggle with our words, struggle with our faith, it's there for us as well. Those well-worn, well-loved words cradle us and hold us and guide us into the ways of peace. When we struggle with the words, struggle with the faith, it is there, faithful. But of course, we walk alongside something, alongside someone much bigger and greater than even the combined hopes and prayers and confessions of millions of people across the ages. We walk alongside that which John the Baptist was called to announce, of whom he said, I must decrease and he must increase. Our first lesson said, the mercy of the Lord is upon all flesh. That's upon me and you and everyone else watching today and all those people we walk past every day, whether they stop and smile at us or not. He, the Lord, is the one who offers to guide our feet. He offers to love our souls and all through showing us light. This is a light which not only guides our feet and our paths in this life, but steers us clear of the shadow of death through the eternal into a life which is everlasting beyond. This is a light whose rays reverberate and refract from the very beginning of creation far beyond our imaginations, far beyond the depths of our science, far beyond the stretch of our history. This is a light which is the day spring from on high. This light is, of course, the light of Jesus Christ. I'll let you into another secret. None of us are very good drivers, at least not drivers of our own souls. Guidance and grace may not be things that we attain overnight, but if we walk on with hope in our heart and with our eyes on our prize and with our prayer books in our hands, we will not walk alone. I promise you that we will walk with everyone who has watched this video today. We will walk with the church from myriad centuries all around the world. And of course, we will walk most importantly with the one who created, redeemed and sustains us. You will walk with God, who is Father, Son and Holy Ghost. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's Church militant here in earth. Almighty and everlasting God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal Church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We beseech thee also to save and defend all our rulers, and especially thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole counsel, and to all that are put in authority under her, they may truly and indifferently minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to Justin and Stephen, our archbishops, to all bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, especially to those joining us at this service, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, remembering those that we wish to name in our hearts at this time. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace to follow their good example that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. And now, wherever you've been, whoever you are, thank you so much for joining us for our worship this morning. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.